here to announce that I have a new book coming out shortly. I really like the artwork my daughter Sue has done. In the videos, short videos you'll see here that she's made announcing this new book. And this tenth book is called Estus Insights. It's not the same as the first one I did away. I did my second insights book actually was called Estus Insights with Z, but that first book only had the second Estus in it, whilst this one has got the Apocrypha books of 1st Estus, 2nd Estus, and it's also got 4,000 years of Biblical history from creation to Christ, a lot of very interesting information. My first book with a Z, Estus Insights, which quite a few have. I was a very slim book, only had 150 pages in it. The new book's got more like 350 or more pages in it. It's at the publish as we speak. But the new book has been beefed up a lot. Even in the second Estus, it's been beefed up with a lot more. And first Estus is basically the history of how it was fulfilled gave Ezra lots of visions and prophecies about what would happen in the future. And in First Ezra, book for book, First Ezra, which actually was written after Second Ezra, that's why I put it in that order in my book. That showed the historical fulfillment of all those prophecies and visions. It's a really incredible story. Uh, believe it or not, Ezra, he lived to be something like 120 years old, according to the Hebrew books. It's, it's quite something, somebody lived that long. Well, he did spend at least 40 days in fasting and prayer to get all the visions and dreams you'll read about in the second Ezra, or in my book here, Ezra's Insights. The thing is that God told Ezra some very unusual things which you won't find anywhere else. However, a lot of the snippets of the things he got are backed up by other books and that's what I try to do. One of the most outstanding things that Ezra talks about is mentioning in at least five chapters that the earth is hollow. And God makes it really clear to Ezra the earth is hollow. And I think it's something everybody needs to know about. I think it's completely logical. I think scientifically speaking, it's very logical. You'll find out that most scientists and people until the 1950s, they also believed the Earth was hollow. It's only in modern times that man switched over to the paradigm of the Earth being solid. But if you really know your science and maths and physics, you realize that the Earth being solid does not add up. It's not scientific. There's so many facts. One of these days I'll draw them all out for you. There's so many scientific facts. For example, if the Earth was solid all the way through, the Earth would be so heavy it wouldn't rotate in space. It would slow down. It doesn't make sense. And there are many tests you can make. You can, you should, can see on my other videos, I made some simple tests one time to show that the Earth is hollow, some four years ago. Some simple experiments you can do to show that the Earth can't be solid. And also another scientific fact about the Earth is that if the Earth was solid all the way through the way we are taught in modern times, the gravity would be so strong that we'd be crushed, we couldn't even walk on a planet. 
You see, there's certain fundamental things people need to do. Use science the right way, maths, physics the right way, those things I studied at university. Use it the right way, and you'll come up with totally different conclusions than what you're spoon-fed by modern education, modern science, even the history books. They're all polluted. Why are they polluted? Because those in charge want the masses to be dumbed down and just believe their narrative. And the narrative is changing all the time, as you probably noticed the last three years. So whatever they say, whatever the, those who rule say is what the truth, that's what they say themselves. Truth is whatever we say is. That's their attitude, that's their arrogance. But it's important people start to realise things are not the way you are taught. And that's what I hope you will see in reading this book, Esther's Insights. There's a lot of strange, amazing things that God revealed to Ezra, Prophet Ezra, in that book. And that's why I encourage you to do get my new book, Esther's Insights, as I think it has a, a lot of insight in it, a lot of wisdom, and I think you'll find it exciting to read. So that's basically what I wanted to say today. And I'm just going to be explaining a few of the pictures on the cover that my dear daughter Sue has made so well. I think most people have heard somewhere or other that inside the earth is, is hell, a lake of fire, according to the Bible, and also at one time it used to be the Garden of Eden. In the Garden of Eden, you'll find, if you look, all states the Garden of Eden is inside the earth. Well, that's a big topic in itself. But I think what we need to come up with these days is foundation stones of truth. Get people back to what really is the truth. So you've got some certain foundation stones you can rely on. And I think one of them is the earth's hollow. And not only the earth has hollow, but the moon, sun, all the astral bodies are hollow, and for good reason. And you'll find there was a lot of very famous scientists prior to 1950 that believed the same thing. They all did, so Isaac Newton did. The guy who supposedly invented gravity, he said the Earth was hollow. So did the discoverer of comets, Haley. Many other people. Well, if you have a scientific mind and you know your maths and physics, and you see through the lies and the deceptions, and study the right material, then you'll also come to that conclusion, the earth has to be hollow. And as I said in my other videos, God in his wisdom made things hollow so he could put something else inside it. Everything in creation is hollow. And in the second essence, God describes the world as like a womb. It's like a womb. And what's a womb? It's an empty place where you put something inside it, like a baby and a whole bunch of water. Well, inside the earth is like that. Inside the earth, there are oceans, there are lands. And not only that, there are many, many creatures down there that we don't see here. Many creatures, including all these things that science likes to relegate to millions of years ago, such as dinosaurs and stuff. You find all those things down inside the earth. I think that at some time or other those creatures, they, how would you say, they just, they disappeared and went away to inside the earth for different reasons and I think their actual size was a threat to themselves from man and also the shift in climate. The shift in climate they make all this fuss today about global warming when that's not the real problem. They're not telling the truth. Global warming is another one of these mantra lies of modern science and powers that be. The real problem, ladies and gentlemen, is we're running out of oxygen. Yeah, that's a shocking thing to know. That's another fact. We're running out of oxygen. Thousands of years ago, just after the flood, we used to have at least 20-30% more oxygen than we have in the atmosphere right now. I know because we studied about this topic for years when my wife used to do hyperbaric oxygen treatment and we talked to the guy who started those centers and who wrote a book all about oxygen. Amazing book, just amazing book. 
about how the oxygen levels are getting dangerous, especially in the big cities. In Scotland, I think in general the oxygen level is about 21%. Well, just imagine at a time when the oxygen level used to be 50% or 40%. I mean, a lot of people say, oh, you couldn't have that because it would explode if you had that much oxygen around it or burn. Well, I don't know. God kept things in check and working. All I know is a lot of modern diseases and sickness are caused because, and allergies in particular, because not having enough oxygen. And that's why a lot of people naturally migrate to the countryside. I've got the mountains, go in the nature where there is more oxygen, near the trees. But in certain big cities on the planet right now, they're getting dangerously low in oxygen. But that's another topic in itself. But just to say, I think that is the reason why the big creatures migrated to inside the earth. And talking about the hollow earth and the inner earth is a big topic in itself. But to me, it's not strange at all. It's not so mysterious or paranormal or something, not at all. I think it's just a natural progression of how nature is. It makes perfect sense. You'll find it's not just in some of the Apocrypha books, like Esther's Insights, you'll find it in the book of Enoch, you'll find a book of Job in the Bible, you'll find it in the mystical book of the Zohar, Hebrew book, Jewish book, you'll find it also in the Torah, Hebrew book, You'll find it many places, and you'll find all civilizations all over the earth talk about there are places inside the earth, without exception. Every nation talks about it. They know. But I think there's a lot more to it. I think the big question to ask is, why do they hide the facts from the people? Why would they deliberately lie about how the earth is made up? Well, there's a lot of good reasons for that. A lot of good reasons for that. I won't go into that now. But do get my book... Esther's Insights it talks about these things and it links with other of my Insights books like Eden Insights also mentions it, Lost Books of Adam and Eve, Book of Enoch mentions it. God said it many times through his prophets. But man is always trying to hide things for one reason or the other. I suppose he doesn't want gold diggers going down there if they knew the earth's hollow and knew the things that are down there. It's not all bad things down there, by the way. There's a lot of good things down there inside the earth. I believe as, it, as we are speaking right now, I think there are millions of humans down there, but there are other kind of creatures, others would call different breeds of reptilians, if you want to call them that, and otherwise descended from a snake race. There's all kind of aberrations down there as well, but there are beautiful things down there as well. I also think the Garden of Eden used to be down there. Whether it's still there or not, that's a good question. Eventually it does get taken up to heaven or the, the heavenly city. That's what the Bible says. But I think it's very important for people to have their eyes open, their ears open, and stop listening to the lies of most of science today. Because that's what it is. It's lies, fabrications. They don't know what they're talking about. They change things every 20 years. Did you know that? In fact, a lot of science and that, they throw out anything that's more than 10 years old. And they're just full of arrogance and pride. They don't know anything. You can't know anything without Jesus. You can't know anything without God. You can't know anything if you don't have a connection with Jesus. So the most important thing I can do is tell people, you need to have Jesus in your heart. You need to receive Jesus. And he'll sort you out. He'll take care of you. He that believeth on the Son hath everlasting life. That's what's really important. What's really important is connecting with Jesus, with the Saviour, knowing God. It's very easy to do, very easy to know Jesus personally. You don't have to go to a church building, be part of some organisation or some denominations. None of that's necessary. I think most of the churches today is a pat on the back society, where people go along there on a Sunday for somebody to pat them on the back and tell them, you did well, how good you are. You don't need all that folder, all this childish. All you need is to know Jesus and know God's Spirit. If you know Jesus, he'll direct you in the right direction. He'll direct you to reading the Bible. He'll direct you to prayer. He'll direct you to meditating on the good things in general for your own spiritual well-being. But for those who haven't yet experienced that with Christ, it's very simple. 
You just have to pray this simple prayer. You just have to realize that you're a sinner, first of all. And no, you're not perfect. And you can't, you, you can't make it. So how are you going to live forever? Well, it's simple. Jesus died on the cross for all of us so you can be saved. All you have to do is pray this simple prayer. Dear Jesus, please forgive my sins. Please come into my heart and give me eternal life. And fill me with your Holy Spirit and empower me to understand your word, the Bible. Simple as that. Once you've prayed that prayer, I promise you, and Jesus and his Holy Spirit will take care of you. And they'll fill you with love and a caring spirit. And you'll be concerned about things. You'll change your whole life just by asking Jesus into your heart. That's my mission, is to pray with as many people as I can, while I can, while I'm still here. Now, I say that because I'm 71 years old. Um, but I hope you will indeed get hold of my Insights books. I now have eight Insights books. Estrus Insights with an S being the original spelling, that's how, so that's how the, the new book is written with an S. The first time I did a book I spelled it with a Z just because Ezra himself is spelled with a Z, but I, I didn't realize at the time that the word Esdras was with an S which is the Greek spelling. So that's what the new book will be. Esdras Insights. So you can get all my books at Amazon and this new book Esdras Insights will be coming out in about a month's time. Well, thanks for listening. Bye for now.